Hi, welcome to another episode of Weld, where each week we explore different pathways available in the welding industry. This week, we're all the way out here in Utah at BZI Steel. I'm here with Adrian Benitez. And Adrian, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience just in case they're not familiar with you and what you do? Yeah, so my name is Adrian Benitez. Um, I work for Steel Tech Academy, which is an organization under BZI Steel or BZI, the group of companies that we have. We're a training facility for anyone that comes in. Um, doesn't matter if you're a manager, um, a welder, a laborer, anything like that. You come into our facility and you get trained on different things. We do OSHA 10s, we do OSHA 30s. We uh, also certify in uh, 3G and 4G, one inch unlimited for welding. Um, we do multiple things there. It's just a training facility to keep people safer. Well, how did you first get involved? Because we were talking a little bit when we first came here today, and you kind of fell into this job. So can you kind of tell us what led you to start working here? I was at the right place at the right time, you want to say? So I came from California. I'm a California refugee. Um, came here, moved to Utah, and um, I was working for a company. Great company, a little company, this and that, but it wasn't... You mean, it wasn't what I wanted. I was sitting in a cafe one day and I was just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my foreman. And next thing you know, this guy walks in in a cowboy hat named Michael Roberts. So comes in, we start chatting and he's like, hey, I need you to meet my boss. And I'm like, I had no idea what he was talking about. So the next day he set up an interview. Well, he just said, meet my boss. I don't know if it was an interview or what, but I went in there in t-shirt and jeans and walked in and sat down with one of the owners from uh, BZI Steel or BZI. Um, and one of the managers from Steel Tech Academy, they asked me a couple questions. I honestly felt like I was in trouble like in school again because <laughs> it was in the office. I didn't know what's going on, don't know anybody. Um, and they asked me what I wanted to do with my life and um, where I was heading in life. And I told them, you mean I came to Utah to change my life around and you mean just basically start over. And I thought I was going to the field to work as a welder. I do have welding experience. And sure enough, I landed at Steel Tech Academy right there. Um, I think one of the things that helped is I'm bilingual. So I'm able to help them run their classes in English and Spanish, depending on, we have a big influx of Spanish speakers coming in right now. So BZI tries to help the people coming in to be, we, we, have, to, we have to help them too at the same time they're working for us and we have to help them and kind of understand everything. So we try to just put things in, in their language so they're able to, you I mean, move along. So what kind of experience are people coming to your training facility with? So I would say, for instance, we're getting people that are freshly and they, they might have seen a welding machine before. No experience <laughs> I've at all. I've seen one. I've seen um, one. You have, not people, it. you have people like me, like when I came in, um, I was talking to you earlier and I said I was more um, shown how to weld. So it's like monkey see, monkey do. Like they put a gun in my hand 10 years ago and said, make it look like this. And I was able to do that, but I never knew the whys or how I got to that point. The machine settings, WPSs, welding symbols, anything like that. Um, and when I actually got to Steel Tech Academy, I learned all those things. I learned um, how to set up my machine, how to, how, to, how to maintenance my machine, how to read welding symbols. And it, it goes a lot in more in depth. But the people that we get, we get people that have 15 years experience in welding stick. And we get people that have only seen a welding machine before. If your attitude is right and you're able to pay attention, when you come in and you're able to be teachable, we can show you what you need to do to become a welder. It's one of the, one of the greatest attributes you can have is an attitude. As far as like welding skills, what, what do you think is the hardest for people to pick up when you're training them? How to use a grinder. Oh, yeah. So, so that's, that's a real big thing is, is how to use a grinder. Um, a lot of people tend to grab the, the grinder different ways. They want to have their hand down by where the wheel's spinning, different things. They want to flip that grinder around so that wheel's, that wheel's rotating now towards your face. So when it bites, it's going to kick at you. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of people were um, shown how to use a grinder, never taught how to use a grinder. There's a lot of structural steel around us here. So what kind of skills, like what processes, what do you use most in the structural world? So in the structural world, um, for BZI, we're turning over to wire that we've been using a lot. A lot of people look at it and right away they want to say, oh, it's MIG. It's not MIG, it's FCAW. Um, in the field, we use a dash S process. And um, here in the shop, we use a dash G process. So a lot of people will call that dual shield. Mm -hmm. um, but in the field, it's self-shielded wire that we're using out there. Um, production's faster. I don't have to change out my electrode every five inches to six inches. I can run 20, 30 inch bead if I have to. It's like nonstop stick welding. Yes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> hit the trigger and it goes. Yeah. Well, what are some of the challenges specifically with flux core? Like what are, what are some things that really cause problems with that process? Um, with flux core, um, depending, it also it does leave a slag behind still. Um, if it's not clean, if, if you don't clean that slag off properly, um, you will 
with the wire that we're running, we're running mostly our field wire is an NR233 wire and it's a fast freezing slag. It's hard, so the slag won't remelt itself. And if you just, you mean, weld over your slag or think that the slag's gonna pop out because, oh, well, I'm digging in a little bit, it's gonna come out. You're gonna literally wrap that slag right under there and it's gonna stay under there. When they go to UT it, you'll be uh, using a grinder. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so then as far as like a lot of the applications for welding that you're training people to go out and do for BZI, like mm -hmm. what kind of jobs are people going out there to do? Amazon buildings, we're doing data centers out there, um, food and beverage processing plants. We're, we're touching a little bit of everything right now. Here at BZI, the whole reason we came out here was to check out some of the innovative technology y'all have to speed up the production process. And the big one we've been looking at is the beam champ. So when you're working with structural beams, what are some of the safety things people need to keep in mind? So no matter what, when we're working with any kind of metal or anything like that, um, and we start working with structural metal, it gets really heavy, really big. You mean, um, so the beam champs that you mentioned are something that um, Innovatech, it's a sister company to BZI. They make items for us to keep us safer. Um, and the beam champ, what it does, it's, it could take beams, it could take columns, and it could roll them into position for us so we don't have to roll them manually or with chains or use overhead cranes, anything like that. And it keeps them in, in, a, in a place where we just get to go home with our fingers on our toes at, at the end of the day. You know, we all came to work and we all sell our time every day when we come to work, but at the same time, we all want to go home safe and sound with all our body parts. Yeah. Well, and that's a big thing I've seen here at BZI is safety seems to be pretty important, uh, especially when it comes to your welders. I saw everyone was in PAPR systems, you know, so like uh, a lot of people, they won't have those. That's a comment we get a lot is people call us cowboys out here in the U.S. because we don't use PAPRs. It's not like regulated. Every job has to have one. But you know, I, I see a lot of investment into your workers here. What are some of the benefits of being a welder here at BZI? Um, I think, so when you say being a welder here at BZI, I think in just being a, a team member and, and employee here for BZI brings a lot of benefit. There's, there's different things, but um, you were talking about the, the welding hoods they use with the air system on there. Yeah, they're not, they're not required because the air contaminants aren't above the certain PEL, but at the same sense, um, if they want that and that makes your day better and it makes you be able to weld better and, and just have a happier day, I mean, we purchase them for them. Um, Every, every team member that comes in, usually like field worker or anything like that, we're getting a lot of people from different parts of um, the United States right now. Um, we invest about $8,000 into each person um, and we don't even know them. They're coming in, we invest into them. Um, so that's talking about flight here, that's talking about a hotel here, um, food weather here. And when they leave, they leave with their own gear bag. I've worked with many companies that we have harnesses kind of hung up in a closet. And it's like, hey, go grab a harness if you need a harness. No, here every individual person gets their own harness. Um, hard hat, gloves, safety glasses. Like these are about, I want to say almost two years old. I've changed the lens out of one time, but instead of using getting those um, $7 safety glasses that people like to throw around or leave in the truck or they drop them and they get a new pair, um, they actually give us um, a certain allowance every year for safety glasses. Well, okay, so as far as like, if I wanted to get into structural steel, like be one of the welders out in the field for you, like how, what is the work like? Like, is it like you're doing 12 hour days, 10 hour days? Is it like so, you're going out for a long time? Or? Um, we usually run um, anywhere from 5.30, 6 a.m. to about five in the afternoon. Um, a lot of our field welders, they'll go out, they'll fly out to a job or they drive out to a job. Um, they get out there. Our company actually houses, um, if you want to take per diem, you can take per diem. But if you want to do the company housing, which we, we house them in apartments, we actually do three hot meals a day on the job. Um, you've never heard nice. of that, right? You no. show up, <laughs> breakfast is there, you come back in, lunch is there, and then you, um, when you come back after work, dinner's there. So you have no expenses if you want to go that route. Um, you work for six weeks and they say you want to take a week off. You let them know and they get you a ticket, you fly back home, then you come back to work after that week. That's cool, man. I mean, it, it's, I've not experienced this yet. That's why I'm kind of flabbergasted. Yeah. Like all of this sounds really good for the welders. Uh, how difficult, like how, how competitive is the job market to be a welder here at this company? Um, it's not competitive at all. We don't, we don't have that ego like most companies do. Um, there's certain uh, companies out there, trades is like, I got to be the biggest, strongest um, iron worker out there, right? No, we're just using different tools and different things to get our job done more efficiently. Um, and it's not hard at all. If you have, if you have the willingness to come 
to Steel Tech and learn. And um, we actually pay you for training. We don't charge you to come and train for us. Um, sometimes people come in and they, we put them into the welding class and may, they might not have been hired as a welder, but we find attributes that are, hey, you, you, you do this great. You never be seen this. You thought you were gonna be a laborer for your whole life. You know, we try to have people think bigger and, and outside the box that um, I tell, I tell my welders all the time when they come in, don't always think you're going to be a welder. You I mean, there's other opportunities out there in the steel erection industry other than a welder. If you think as that I'm only going to be a welder forever, you're thinking small. Let's yeah. think bigger. You I mean, you can, you can be running a, a crew one day. We'll be right back after a quick word from the American Welding Program. Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying the show so far. If you're trying to learn more about self-shielded flux score welding like Adrian teaches over at Steel Tech Academy, but don't know where to start, start with the American Welding Program. They have an awesome course called Basic Wire Process Welding that'll get you dialing in your machine like a pro, teach you the different transfer methods, and teach you a little bit about the differences between self-shielded and dual-shielded and when you'd want to use them in the first place. Plus, because you are watching this podcast right now, if you use Weld20 when you check out, you'll save 20%. Go check out everything they have for you to start learning today at AmericanWeldingProgram.org. Now, let's get back to the show. Welcome back. I hope you got a nice little snack on that break. <laughs> I don't know. We never do a welcome back. So, Adrian, tell me a little bit about like what... What is the process of training people here? Because you all really like to train your own people. Yeah, we like to um, do in-house training and train everybody. And even if people come in with an OSHA 10 already, we like to redo that OSHA 10 due to the fact that we, we, we do it. We get in like the audience and the people there. We kind of, it's a, it's a different interaction when, when we get to do it ourselves. But we also train um, people because we don't build uh, buildings traditionally. Uh, okay. Most iron um, workers or anything like that build a building from the bottom to the top. We have different um, items that Novatech has um, provided for us and produced for us that allows us to build buildings from the top to the bottom. So that's, I mean, can you explain a little bit about that process? So because we have, um, we have like, uh, we have a panel table. So instead of going up and sending our, um, our team members up on the roof to throw deck down to get it filled in and all that, what we actually end up doing is we have a panel table on the floor and we build it in sections. So like 60 by 40 sections. And then we have forklifts with different attachments that Novatech had built. Um, and it comes in and it grabs a panel table from, uh, grabs a panel from the bottom, picks it up and it sends it up and it locks. And then we have, um, we have uh, bolters or um, connectors that go up and they connect the big old squares together. So they lock in all the, the beams and everything up there, which sets our roof in, right? When it sets the roof in, um, after the whole roof setting, we go to the next floor, go to the next floor. That allows for the roofers to get up there, even if they're subcontractors, to start laying the foam down and the vinyl down. And it allows other, other contractors to get in and start working while we're moving down. By the time we're down to the floor, we're out of there and there's people in different levels already working. What is the training for that? Like, is, is that a very specialized training to be able to like operate those types of machines? Um, if you know how to drive a, a, a forklift, that um, a telescoping forklift, um, there's a couple other buttons on there that shows you how to lock the clamps on there, stuff like that. It does take some practice and getting used to. I'm not saying that you're going to be a forklift operator and come in and be able to grab one of those panels right away and take it up. Yeah. Um, it does take a little training. It's, 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 it's a skilled job, but anyone that can drive a forklift usually eventually gets trained into lifting up panels. Um, instead of using um, cranes and stuff like that, if we can reach with a forklift, a, a telescoping forklift, we'll send it up with a forklift with two guys in baskets so we're not walking steel anymore. It keeps people safer. Um, we don't have that risk of people falling off the steel, hanging in a harness. And what's the speed like? We've been out on jobs where we've had the same building with different iron working companies out there. And we've, you I mean, they were there nine weeks before us. We roll in, um, we unload, we get the building done in about three, four months and we're out and they're still setting beams with a crane. Well, okay. So then as far as when you are training, like what is the progression? Like what are the steps that I have to go to training with you guys to become a welder? The first week, um, you would do your OSHA 10, your forklift certifications, um, your MEWP certifications, uh, bolting, rigging, all that good stuff, right? Because even though you're coming in as a welder, there's going to be days that there is no welding to do because we're either we're waiting on material or the welding's done. So either you're going to go home or you're going to help do other things. Yeah. So you have to get all those certs. Then you come in for us and we have a fast track program. We don't have all the time that like welding schools have. We got minimal time and it's usually about six to seven days that we can take someone in. We do our class portion of welding is probably 10 hours through the week. 
but we go hands on, let's go, let's dive in, and let's just get to learning this. Um, and by the time they're done, they can usually pass a three and a four G cert, um, one inch unlimited in the FCAW-S process. Dang. So it doesn't mean you're gonna be a qualified welder means you're certified. Now you can go out to the field and we can walk you. We can start you on small welds, fillet welds, things like that. And as you progress, you'll eventually be, you'll get into those CJP welds. Okay. Well, okay. So for people out there that are just getting out of school and they, they're not really that, that uh, knowledgeable about the structural world, what, what, do you, what advice would you give to somebody that thinks, I want to start building buildings? Apply at bzi.com. No, um, <laughs> no. Um, uh, honestly, it's uh, just wherever you get put at, there's some days that you're going to be using a grinder, you're going to be helping someone or something, but have a good attitude and and be willing to do whatever it has to, has to be done to get there. You know what I mean? Um, if they require you to wear your safety glasses all day long, put them on. We're all adults here, right? We don't need someone to tell us, hey, put your gloves on or, or make sure you use a grinding shield when you're grinding. And those are the little things that people see and that I, I look into detail. If you have to get, if you someone tells you, hey, I need all these cut at one inch, make sure you're cutting at one inch and you're doing the, the, the project right. You know, it's, uh, I look at a lot of people and they're not detail oriented and that's not someone that I'd want on my team. You I mean, I want people that are detail oriented. Uh, like we tell people, we don't want things um, right now. We want them right. So take your time on doing things, have a great attitude and, and just put your best foot forward. As far as like you told me when you were welding before, it was kind of like show and then do. Like as far as advancing your welding skills, what advice do you have for people out there to learn more or get more processes under their belt? Um, honestly, what helped me a lot and was YouTube videos. Like people don't really understand like a lot of these videos from you guys to other um, channels gave me a lot, of a lot of knowledge. And there was times that I thought, when am I ever gonna learn this process or try this? Or this trick that someone gave me in a tip. But um, don't be afraid to try anything. Um, and you're not gonna be the best at it when you first start. But just have that attitude of amateurs do it until they get it right. Professionals do it until they don't get it wrong. So just keep trying. Wise words right there, wise words. Well, if people want to reach out to you or find you on social media and ask you questions, where can they find you? So um, I do have my Facebook, which is at uh, Adrian Benitez. Um, that's my name on Facebook, but my Instagram also is, I believe it's Benitez1717. So they can find me on there. Um, you'll check. probably link it on there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put it down in the show notes. So yeah, any questions, any comments. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the world's going from, um, it's going from electrodes from stick into wire, wires, and people might call us wire monkeys out there and stuff like that, but you I mean, it makes great money when you're out working the field still, so I'll tell you that. Yeah, high deposition never lies, right? Right. Well, thanks, man. Thanks Thank you very much. Thank you for me. having me. And thanks for all your help here at BZI today. This yep. has been a pretty cool experience. You're welcome. That's how you do it, folks. That's how you do it, folks. <laughs> <laughs>